She's graced numerous pages and covers of magazines and landed major campaigns, including Vogue, U.S., Italian, British, Korean, and Spanish, Harper's Bazaar, Interview, Verge Girl, Calvin Klein, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and MAC Cosmetics, to name a few. Yet growing up, she was mocked and teased. What's behind the drive that's led to a successful international career on the runway and on screen? My guest is Jamaican-born Canadian model, runway coach, motivational speaker and television personality, Stacey McKenzie. I'm Archibald Gordon. This is Profile. Stacey McKenzie, welcome to Profile. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm well, so excited to be here. We are absolutely <laughs> delighted to have you because of your, you know, your record. And I want to go through it first. Mm -hmm. Jamaican-born Canadian model, Jamaican-born, I want to say. I want to reinforce that. Runway coach, motivational speaker and television personality. Yes. Graced numerous pages and covers of magazines and landed many major campaigns, including Vogue, for Vogue alone, US Vogue, Italian Vogue, British Vogue, Korean Vogue, Spanish Vogue. Harper's Bazaar, Interview, Verge Girl, Flair, Vibe, Calvin Klein, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and MAC Cosmetics, to name <laughs> a few. When you listen to this list of, and this is just part of your repertoire, mm -hmm. also went on um, to be on screen, both in film and in and television as well. When you listen to all of this, how do you feel, first of all? Can I tell you, usually I get very emotional because, you know, when I think of... Um, you know, where I came from, um, what it took for me to get to where I'm at today, you know, the ups and downs and the trials and just the challenges. Um, when I hear, you know, the things that I've, that I've accomplished and even just like to this day, whenever I even get jobs, me being here on profile, I'm literally just, just in awe and I get very emotional because for me, it's truly a blessing because I would, I would have never thought that, I, I, that I'll be able to live my dream, you know, get to ex experience like you know living my dream right and um and and, and plus so much more I, I never would have thought so it's it, it feels good and it's it's also very like ah uh, like it's moments. hard to believe it's hard to believe at times yes let's talk about the journey <laughs> to to living that dream let's <clears throat> talk about we talk about it because we say you're jamaican born canadian jamaican born meaning you grew up here in yeah Kingston. born in jamaica yeah almond town yeah, and I, and I left from Jamaica to go to Canada. What when were the circumstances of growing up in Jamaica? Well, growing up in Jamaica, I mean, my mom, uh, I, you know, my, my, pa my father passed when I was younger, I was a baby, and I, it was always my mom. She took care of me and my, my sibling. I'm the youngest one. Um, there's a brother and a sister, and, you know, she, she took care of us. She would do anything, not anything. She will make sure that we have the best of the best, even when we don't have it like that, right? Um... And growing up, uh, I mean, I went to Central Branch All Age School, and I literally lived right across the street from the school. So, and my mom used to sell; she used to like cook food and sell food in the schoolyard, right? And um, you know, she was a, a go-getter. She was also into fashion because she used to sell clothing as well. Um, and you know, just very like you know, just a just a a, a strong you know, go-getter um, mother who just never, you know, like um, gives up on life, never gives up on her children, always making sure that we have the best of the best, even when we don't have it like that, and despite where we come from, right? Because I come from some serious hoods, <laughs> some serious neighborhoods, <laughs> right? Um, you know, like I said before, I was born in Alman Town and I was raised Slipin Road before I moved to Canada. When I moved to Canada, I lived in um, a place called Jungle, right? Another place called Glendower, right? So I come from some serious, you know, neighborhoods. But your right? mother was always reinforcing this idea that you could do anything, both by what she was doing, but what, what was she also saying to you? No, and well, my mom was always saying that, well, she wanted me to be a dog, well, you know, the typical, you know, Jamaican parents are, lawyer, right? Doctor, it's had a lawyer, doctor, teacher, nurse, <laughs> right? And originally I wanted to be a doctor, so I was always working towards that as a child. And, uh, and then I had a really bad accident and I was like, nah, I do not want to be a doctor. I do not want to be a nurse. I don't want to see nothing about that. Not for me. Um, and then uh, it was my sister, my sister came to visit and she brought an in-flight magazine. And that's when I came across the world of fashion. Mm -hmm. Originally, initially, when I told my mom that I wanted to be a model, she was like, you know, who for house? 
you know, my, no, I'm like, going to no, be a lawyer, doctor, teacher, nurse, right? But then when she saw how persistent I was, like um, when I was living here, uh, growing up here, uh, I used to just use my resources, which wasn't much, to like teach myself how to become a model. So how to pose, I would like, you know, look in front of the mirror, my dresser mirror, and I would emulate different types of poses. How to walk, you know, I would take my mother's shoe, um, you know, wedges or high heels, bring it to school, switch my school shoes, and that's how I taught myself how to walk in heels, right? But she saw that I was very persistent. Every day I get beat. Right, because you know we have a you know we have a specific uniform to wear, and no, stays in a class in a high heel. I walk up and dog everybody. I laugh after me, right? And my mom, you know, she's she was watching me. She was still trying to reinforce me to become a Something doctor. Something other than a mother. Yeah, that's that's more um, stable. She didn't look at you know the fashion industry as something as, you know, um, stability of stability for me for the long term, right? And then you moved to Canada. Now. Yes. Your, your, your mother and you moved yes. to Canada. Yes, yeah. Um, this was when you decided to pursue mother at, modeling at a different level. Yes, because in Canada, we have, we have more opportunities to pursue modeling, right? In Jamaica, there was no such thing really as a model. I mean, as far as I, what I could have remembered anybody saying about a model was more so Grace Jones. So she was like my go-to, um, you know, like in terms of, okay, Grace Jones. I'm different like her, right? You know, uh, she's Jamaican and I'm different like her. And, you know, she went to foreign. Now I have the opportunity to be in foreign. Yeah, that's how I'm going to do it. But you, as you say, you understood yourself to be different in terms of what you looked like oh, from yes. the beginning. Oh, yeah. Why? Because I didn't look like... Even in school, I didn't look like the typical black girl. You know what I'm saying? My light skin, both my parents are black, right? And, um, and you know, I'm super light skin. I have freckles, I have blonde hair, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, in, in my school, I was the only, only girl person looking the way I look. Whenever I go, um, you know, whenever me and my mom would go to the market, you know, I'm going to Coronation Market or wherever I forgot to go shopping. And think people always are stare upon me. People always looking at me, always, you know, like laughing, making fun. Like growing up back then, you know, like the jokes were, she had dundus, you know, she looked like a dundus that, or, you know, um, a yellow mandata and them kind of things. Eh? So I realized from a very young age, I am extremely different <laughs> looking. And You're then on top of that. And, how were you dealing with being mocked and teased, essentially? It was, it very, I, I didn't deal with it. I dealt with it well in, 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 in public because I never showed how much it was hurting. I kept it hidden because one thing my mom was always telling me, to never ever show, never ever let anybody make me feel less of who I am and don't show nobody say, you know, I say I feel bad or I go through bad things. Whenever I'm out there, you know, put on a put on a face, and then whenever you're back home, you know, let's say do what you gotta do, you know, like to let it all out. But when you go out there, hold your head up, stand up straight and tall, shoulders back, and you know, and just, you know, and just be be, you know, confident. She was saying this to you even as a young child. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't yeah. She was telling me, don't let nobody make you feel like you're not you're not nothing. I want right? to talk a little bit about how this changed or even was exacerbated or got worse when, mm -hmm. we, when, when you went to Canada. But we have to take the break on profile. My guest is Jamaican-born Canadian model, runway coach, motivational speaker, and television personality, Stacey McKenzie. And we're back with you on the other side of these messages. Mm -hmm.